A great session on the Australian share market, up by 0.6%, pretty much in line with what we've seen around the region with both Japan and Korea up by about 0.7%. As Michael mentioned, volumes have been relatively good compared to the rest of the week, and it is single stock expiration today. So we should see a bit more volume going through the market tomorrow because of the exercise of some of the options and some movements of movement of stock tomorrow morning. So t tomorrow should be an even better day in terms of volumes. I guess giving the market a little bit of optimism is uh, Europe and hopes for a circuit breaker or some sort of bailout coming from the European Central Bank really helping to buoy sentiment a little bit today. We also saw some good earnings coming through from the likes of Boeing and Caterpillar overnight in the US although the US did see a flat result but a bit of a strange performance in terms of different sectors and that's because we saw the discretionary and the industrial sector outperforming as well as the telecom and utility sectors. All these areas were up by around about 1% really showing no clear bias in investors or traders methods today towards growth or defensive. Overall, they seem to be uh, happy to invest in the growth area of discretionary or industrials or the uh, defensive areas of telecom and utilities all around about uh, a gain of 1%. So altogether, a good day for the Australian market, quite resilient, resilient, and we're looking forward to some good volumes going through the market in the first hour of trade tomorrow on the back of some of those option exercises. Rick, would you be confident of that? In lieu of some sort of uh, political agreement, political action, many question where is the ECB in all of this? I know there are constraints there, but some suggest they still need to, to do something. I mean, would you expect some stimulatory measures by the ECB or some sort of banking license to be given to, to them or one of these bailout funds? That's a bit of a tug of war right now because we heard comments earlier on in the week from Draghi saying that the ECB wouldn't be playing an expanded role. But of course, overnight markets getting some hope from a possible banking license for the European stability mechanism. Now, this e ESM takes effect uh, from mid-September um, and there are hopes that this banking mechanism will mean that uh, the funds at, at the disposal of this uh, facility will be able to be geared up a notch and I guess that's one of the problems a lot of people worried about the amount of money it's going to cost to bail out the likes of Spain as well as uh, Italy if we have a look at Spain those bond yields really indicating that Spain's pretty close to a bailout They've been locked out of the capital markets. The, the crisis have, has now spread from being a banking crisis into a regional uh, crisis as well. And of course, a lot of concerns uh, around the impact that's going to have in terms of the growth coming through from Europe on the banking space in Europe and some of the profits coming through from European institutional uh, banks. And then, of course, the impact on the rest of the world. And I guess China's an interesting impact in terms of the Australian market because this week the Australian market has actually been pretty resilient in the face of what's happening in Europe and I think a large part of that was the, uh, the HSBC flash PMI numbers which came in better than expected but if we do have a look at the Chinese stock market it is painting a very different picture and if we just have a look at the 52 week picture because things have changed over the last week and what we have seen is a new 52 week low being reached on the Shanghai Composite. So you can see that the, the Chinese market very much under pressure, so probably signalling that there could be a bit more weakness to come. And of course, the Australian market not only taking its cues from the US, but also from China. In regards to this stock? I mean, it is a quality producer. It's got great quality assets and it's a low cost producer as well. But the fact that we've seen a number of downgrades throughout the year, with the yeah. last one being in April, has just uh, eaten away at confidence of investors in this particular stock. So I think what we initially saw in Newcrest shares when they spiked over 5% was a bit of a relief rally. We saw them meeting guidance. Their costs were within guidance as well at $604 so announced. So altogether, coming in on expectations. And this is a stock with a strong growth profile as long as it doesn't run into any more problems and the key assets being uh, Lahir as well as Kadia. We know that Kadia East is due to come online at the end of the year. They're within 10% of the original estimate. So I think a bit of a sigh of relief given all the bad news that we've seen from Newcrest shareholders over the last year. And if the stock does manage to get its operations in order, then it, perhaps we will see a bit more confidence coming into this stock. But if you compare Newcrest's performance to some of the other gold miners, it really underperformed today. Gold price has had a fantastic night in uh, the New York session and Newcrest only up by 1% that's compared to a stock like Evolution Mining which was up by around about 9% Alassa Gold which was up by 5.3% Regis Resources gaining about 4.6% so underperforming that gold space after that initial relief rally. So 